go for it, time. Go for it, time. I'm going to start with Bill. Bill, we're going to talk about the Yankees' glory days. I think we'll keep it a little more recent. You know, we could, you get the 50s with the Maggio, and then Mantle in the 50s, and then the 60s with yeah. Mantle and Maris. But all of recent, the decades. Yes. Yeah. Our recent Long run time the, ago. Our recent run in the 90s. It was amazing. And up until now. It was so amazing. We can't go early 90s, so that's what Steinberg got. Steinberg, I'll, I'll, I'll give you one it's, carryover. Steinberg got suspended. Yep. Gene Michael took over, drafted Jeter, held on to Bernie Williams, yep. held on to Rivera. And then Steinbrenner came back, and I'll lead it right into you. You know, we had it straight right from the, the strike season where the Yankees were leading the division at the time that the season ended. Came right back in 95, extremely competitive in Jeter's first year, and then we had a chance to actually come out and make it to the playoffs and lose to that, that game, game five against Griffey. Yeah, that That's great more Man Man team. last year than Jeter's. Right. Manningly's last year. It, and it's sad. It's sad to hear that, that that era was completely without the anchor of the team for 12 years. For sure. Mm -hmm. And then he transitioned right into this beautiful era where it was Jeter's team, but it was Jeter's teams with the core four that allowed everything to just roll forward because you had Jeter, you had Bernie, you had Pettit, and you had Mo in the back end of the bullpen. Don't forget a guy like Paul O'Neill, who is very often overlooked, but a guy who kind of coming Star from those Michael Reds Warriors, teams yeah. and stuff yeah. like that, like really solidified that, that, uh, 100%. Uh, that dugout. Tino helped a lot also when Timo, Tino came along. He had a came huge first Mariners. half. Came from the Mariners, right? Came right off that team. But even like the smaller guys that you, you don't talk about as much, like Charlie Hayes playing third base in 96, or the Scott Brochus that came in, it was the 98 to 2000 teams. I mean, that era and that team was incredible. 98 and 98 and 2000 were both two of the best seasons of baseball that we played. It was the best season of baseball of all time. And that was what you, th those, that era too really uh, talks about exactly what you talk about. Uh, mentioned before about these little signings. They just picked guys out and they just performed. Scott Brocious. Yeah. Guy wasn't yeah. all of a sudden he's 100 RBIs in the ninth position, you know. Mariana Duncan. You Wayne, trained for Wade Boggs, Fielder. the guy who you was kind of Wade Boggs. Who was kind of down yeah. on, uh, on the backside of his career. Yeah. Still able to perform. At trade a high for level. Chili Davis. He does good. Trade for Cecil Fielder. He does good. You know, you got Tino Martinez. He was doing good. They really had a way of plugging in guys and, the, and would do extremely well for them. And at the same time, they took the knife and turned it on I'm on the Mets. I'm concerned about what's about to happen right Something now. Something might explode, <laughs> but we're going to stick with it. The uh, they took they took it's the remote, remote to the to the uh, the camera. Yeah, it's, I think it's the remote uh, to the camera. Yeah, I'm full. we're we're don't we're worry, working guys, it. But we're, we're going to survive. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to we're going to take care of these things here, folks. Oh, nobody wants Bill, this. Bill's got nobody it. wants Bill's this. Here. We'll take. Oh. We got it. We got it. We're good. We needed another Mr. Bridgeside in here. It's Mr. Come on, folks. It's a family uh, relation. But so you had these years, and just to turn the knife, and I apologize. I apologize on behalf of the Yankees. What does Steinbrenner and the team go out and do? They sign Daryl Strawberry and Doc Gooden. Doc Gooden throws a no hitter. <laughs> Mets had never thrown a no hitter. Johan finally did it. It's terrible. Mets had never thrown a no hitter. Feels good. Hitter. But it's terrible. Throws Don't forget David Cohn. David, David Cohn was Cone. another guy who played exceptionally well for both teams. Now, mind you, Doc Gooden had his best seasons oh, with not even the Mets. Close. Not even close. But he oh, still yeah, was able to contribute to the Yankees on World Series caliber teams year after year. So. Yeah. You know, and that... Look, that 90s Yankees and into spill into 2000, still, they were great in the 2000s. They didn't win the same the titles as much as they did in the 90s. They were still a very, a very, very good team. It was the last period of baseball that was almost mythical. That Yeah, that 90s was the four out of five. You had, you know, you had the face of a franchise that became unarguably the face of baseball for a little while in Jeter. But before yeah. that, the Yankees had a tough run. Yeah. You know, they, from, they were... You look at, you know, if you're a Yankee fan now, you could you can't imagine Yankee Stadium being empty. That's one thing yeah. that Yankees have. The Yankees have, you know, from the time that I've, you know, been watching baseball, I've had amazing fans always turn out to the stadium. Always turn out. I'm saying that I could watch. But in the 80s, you saw some empty stadiums. You mentioned Paul O'Neill. I just want to say why Yankee fans are great. I don't know. One of my favorite moments of Paul O'Neill Yankee fans was Game 5, 2001 World Series, when it was O'Neill's... It was the it was uh let me check it was top of the ninth so it couldn't be the bottom ninth it was top of the ninth because O'Neill was on the field and the Diamondbacks were winning the game before Brochus hit, hit the home run yeah so that was going to be O'Neill's O'Neill says it was his yeah. last season that was O'Neill's last oh. game in Yankee Stadium because they were going back to Arizona for Game Six and Game Seven and the crowd for the entire and even Joe Buck uh, mentions it <laughs> but the crowd for the whole 
top of the ninth inning, he was just chanting Paul O'Neill yep. the whole inning because yeah. they thought it was a send off. He ended up having to go back out for the tenth, eleventh, and twelfth because the game went. But they didn't know. They, yeah. But they didn't know. But that was really a magical Class. fan moment and Paul O'Neill. But we were talking about there were empty stadiums in in the eighties. Yeah. And why were there empty stadiums? Because the Mets had their glory days. The Mets had a, One of their a, glory a days. great run between eighty four. To about, I want to say, 89-90 was really where they were competitive teams. The Yankees put on some terrible ball clubs, like guys like Kevin Moss and like Matt Noakes, and just Don Mattingly saddled with team after team that just couldn't get things going. That you know, late Met, 80s got bad for the Yankees. But. The Mets had, especially in 85 and 86, getting Gary Carter in there, bringing in you know guys like... Lenny Dykstra, Wally Backman, all of these guys finally came together under the Lenny tutelage Dykstra. of Davey Johnson. And having a great, yeah, having a great pitching great staff. Night. Now the core of their announcing staff. Yeah. Hmm. Which Lee, Lee Mazzilli, a guy like Lee Mazzilli. Yeah. That and team, that, that team was rock stars. That was the yeah. thing about them. They, and they played like hard. They, they partied hard. They were <laughs> constantly like in the stars. news. I think they won 110 games that year. 108, I believe it was. 108, wow. sorry. 86, yeah. They, they, just well, the best thing about time. Charisma. You know, my favorite player of all time, Gary Carter, just destroying the baseball, hitting, you know, multiple home run games, three home runs, just his inner Reggie Jackson coming mm -hmm. out. Yep. It, it was just a beautiful time to be a baseball fan, and they owned the city. They, they owned New York at Ima that time. Imagine if they, you know, focused more on baseball. To be honest, and that's the one thing about the, that Met glory days. Also, has a very Met thing to it. If you talk to anyone who was a, the Mets, could have put a dynasty together for sure with yeah. that team. Yeah, talent. Yeah, Doc Good and Dow Strawberry, all these, all these guys coming up. They didn't even make the playoffs the next year in '87. They made the playoffs in '88, but they lost to the Dodgers in an incredible series. And then that was it, and it was gone. And then just like that, it was gone. By 89, 90, no one was talking about the Mets going to the World Series. Because they started piecing. Yep. A lot of the core guys were already on the tail end of their prime. Like guys like Keith Hernandez, guys, guys like Gary destroyed Carter. destroyed their primes too, unfortunately. Sadly, through, through partying and all that stuff, for sure. Lenny Dykstra yeah. is a guy. Yeah. Daryl Strawberry, Doc Gooden. A lot of guys a lot were of like them. that. Yeah. yeah.